All right, we are live. How's it going, guys? We are back again with uh, <laughs> Mr. Greg, my twin. <laughs> How's it going, you're, buddy? You're, 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 early. you're just missing glasses, man. I used to wear glasses, and then I got that surgery. Oh, okay. So I should do that and dye my hair. That was the best. So. That was the best. Uh, back season. again. That surgery yeah, was amazing. Uh, Mr. Greg, my and twin. Amazing. Me with my video here great all right so we are back so for today uh greg did some work on the character unfortunately i couldn't do much like i didn't do anything basically and greg changed some of the design he's going to explain what he did what what decisions he made and we're going to focus on him because we have two hours today and then uh once this is done once we get to a better point maybe next week we can focus on or whenever the next uh, live is we can focus on armor design and put, put both of our focus on just designing a really nice armor to fit the character. So I'm going to switch to your desktop, Greg, and you can start talking about that. All right. So what's happening? Am I seeing it? Okay. Now I'm seeing it. Sorry. I wasn't seeing it. Um, yeah. So from last week, uh, where we sort of ended on the guy, um, from our little sketch session, uh, I went in, we had some chats about sort of like what the design of the character, you know, sort of where we were leaning more and he's, you know, supposed to be more decrepit. And like we said, he's going to be sort of ancient in that sense. Right. So this guy was feeling a little bit, I don't know, narrow, a little bit Jack, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, not Jack in the sense like that, but more like, yeah, he looks like he could just start running at you and charging. So yeah, I went in and uh, reworked him a bit to what you see on the left here, uh, change up his design, his silhouette, um move this over here so you can see yeah you know the, the silhouette changes. shape difference right yeah um, it was sort of spurned i think i brought it up on the last fall where i saw a lady in the grocery market with this crazy hump right and it was almost like a 90 degree angle hump so i tried to look online and find some pictures there was some photos of that um from like medical patients so yeah so that's where i ended up going with it to like it looks crazy but yeah of course he's gonna have design so that will change up how that silhouette reads a little bit but mm -hmm. This guy on the left feels way more decrepit and ancient, you know, uh, than the guy on the right. So yeah, so we pushed to that. And then uh, what I ended up doing was uh, after I pushed to that, I took like a metahuman mesh for now, and then I refit it uh, to him. So then that way uh, he has like a clean topology mesh that can work from. And then, um, yeah, there's a couple ways you could do that too, which I'm sure a lot of people have seen uh, like Z wrap or wrap. Uh, but I just did it manually because I don't have either of those. So <laughs> yeah, um, I just manually do it. And then just like we used to do back in the day and then just clean up the shapes. Um, and then one of the, I guess, little uh, features that I do for that kind of stuff is just like, if I'm trying to clean up some of the edges here, like say, say these edges were, uh, you know, like super wonky or whatever like that. Um, or let me try to find a spot that I didn't really work to. Like even this here where it sort of has that curve. Um, I store a morph target at that subdivision level, and then I just bring everything down and sort of clean it up, uh, to the kind of flow that I'm, I'm looking for from the base mesh that I, you know, that I, I pulled from, mm -hmm. uh, and then when I have that flow and that cleanliness that I'm looking for, then I just, uh, project morph back over. And then that way, um, I go, oh, you keep that. the details. Yeah. I keep the details and then I just clean up the topology. Like, cause when I manually fit this guy. The stuff was a bit of a mess everywhere, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that's just how I do it. But again, wrap and Z wrap sort of does all that like for you, right? Yeah. Um, it's sort of like an all in one. <laughs> so yeah, it works. Um, but uh, yeah, I would tell people to definitely check that out. Um, I forget what it is now. It's pretty expensive like these days. But I think if you're going to be doing like a lot of wraps and uh, working on human characters or working, you know, working on stuff where you have to pull from scans, I think it's worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. um because you don't want to manually refit things but i'm just yeah. faster at it because i've done it so many damn times <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah so yeah I, I poured him over then i started just working on some hand stuff but just very basic which we'll, we'll probably catch again tonight and i then... also don't use zero because i'm used to um the way i did it in the past just get a clean topology match it to the high res and project it back and clean it up yeah it really takes like <clears throat> for a face it takes about 30 minutes to one hour to match it for a whole body. It's like two, three hours. It's not the only really thing that, with, uh, that that's so nice is like, 
if you're projecting like a skin or textures, like it's so nice because you could draw a bunch of points for like a fingernail and then mm. match that that texture. Like, yeah, you know, when you have to do that manually, I don't even bother. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just gonna resculpt it and re you know retexture it. But yeah. if you're in a time crunch, it makes a huge difference, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, it's way easier to like take it, swap it over, and then yeah, uh, yeah and do that. And then it, it just keeps it really clean, right? I and mean, they have yeah. some like kind of voodoo magic that they use for that kind of shit, right? So um, yeah, and then I just I just did like a quick uh, fiber mesh groom there just to get rid of this big chunky one that we were looking at, right? Yeah, um, eventually the goal is to use uh, X Gen, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the goal is to use uh, uh, X Gen, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, bring him into Maya, do all that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. then bring out the Alembic to Unreal, right? So Yeah, yeah, Alembic is the way to go. So what's the plan for now? What do you want to work on? Just um, well, so, yeah, so, like, since We'll jump back to the armor uh, after. Um, I think right now it'd just be like we could talk about uh, cleaning up some forms and then break, you know, right now everything's symmetrical, right? Um, yes. It'd be awesome to give them some kind of twist, you know, like scoliosis twist and and really start messing with some of those shapes mm -hmm. there. Um, so those kind of things. And then same thing, like if uh, maybe his left side is the side, you know, maybe it's his right side. That's more, you know, like we were talking about where it's, it's bigger sort of arm. Yeah, it's sort of infected and, and then has some kind of interesting shapes happen there. Um, you know, sort of push anatomy, you know, even if it breaks a little bit just push it, make it look interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'll probably smooth out, like I just did a quick thing on the hands just to have something, but I'll just smooth them out and then we can sort of play around with what we want to do with his hands mm -hmm. as well. Um, right now I just made him just quick little temp wonky ones, right? But yeah. yeah, we can push that. And then, yeah, cause I know a lot of him is gonna be covered like we talked about. So, um, and we could also fuck with feet, like giving him some weird twisted feet maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't nice, know. I mean, anyone nice. in the chat, if whoever's watching, like, if you guys have preference of uh, which you would want me to uh, start on, I mean, uh, feel free to say. I'll give you a minute if you guys want. I'm all, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like, you do, like, detail work, clean, you know, stuff in his face, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do whatever you think you should do because that's how yeah. we want to get I, I jump around. Like, when I work in a character, like, some people will be like, you know, they'll cut a head off and be like, I'm just going to, you know, they'll go up whatever, five, six subdivision levels, and then they'll only focus on taking that yeah. to finish, right? And I don't do that myself. I just go with everything together. Yeah, yeah. Step. I mean, it's it's weird. Like, I'll, I'll jump back and forth depending yeah. on the project, depending on, like, I guess the mood, right? If I'm, like, yes. really into that, you know, like, I'll jump back and forth. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's, again, knowing a character where it's, like, a lot of games, the characters are covered in like 90% clothing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It does make sense clothing. to focus more on the face. Um, and then you can take that and push that more to finish, right? But, yeah, I would, uh, I would actually focus more on the face and the arm because, and, and overall, like the silhouette, because mm -hmm. whatever you do, like what, what I did on the armor last week, it doesn't work. I have to redo it again or match it and then yep. visualize what what we want to do. I would say, I think it's good if you figure out this, the, the, the you know, a, a symmetrical shape. And then that way, so we don't have to like redo armors again. You know, we, we can have something to basically make the armor based on, like if his arm, his the right arm is massive, then the gauntlet here yep. will be different, right? Yep, yep. So I would go with that. All right, so now I'll just start like with more broad shapes of uh, yeah. how we want to change it. I mean, Right now, this guy is not, he's not even in the A pose, really, right? Because his arms are, are down. Uh, yes. Pretty short. Um, if you want for for cleanliness purposes, like when we do, oops, when we do the armor, um, we can just uh, work this guy up here. And then uh, take this and just, just pose him out a little bit. Yeah, maybe a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. And I still want to keep that kind of coat hanger. Yeah, yeah. Vibe yeah. like we were talking about here. And then same, because then this would sort of come out right more. Mm -hmm. Push that volume there as well. Um, yeah. I think less people know that we have a live today. I don't know if you guys want to share this with your friends. Yeah, I, share, I think we shared very late in the week this time around. Yeah, yeah, we kind of did it late. 
We've both been super busy this week, so yeah, it's been yeah. a little bit more challenging. <laughs> yeah, but it's good we are doing it. At least we are doing what we can. Yeah. So yeah, I think for that, I think we're in a That's good spot good, yeah. Just, yeah. just to have that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, save this. Okay. Yeah. So I think off the bat, it's like if we're gonna have again, like we talked about. Some of his shapes, the silhouette, be uh, asymmetrical. I think it could be interesting to, uh, you know, trying to think of him like certain things too, like in production, like say this character would have like, you know, uh, he might be say like pretty offset like this, right? Um, sometimes they would push that like they would ask you to make it more symmetrical. Some places, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Symmetrical. I think his like, face oh, we'll too. Push that in anim, right? But then, yeah. Uh, I've had good and bad of that, right? Um, uh, is this just even match? No, no, this is uh, like a paint quality like that I brought over yeah. from just a metahuman one since everybody has access to that. So that would be <clears throat> try to do that themselves if they want to, right? Yeah, it's metahuman so, mesh, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, just because it's everyone has access to that, right? I hate that metahumans don't have nipple geometry though, uh, mm -hmm. because you want to see that change in the silhouette, but where? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think it's nice when you have this kind of silhouette change, uh, like it's in the mesh, um, because I think it makes the animators like think about that a little bit more. You know, I know you could bake the pose in and, you know, they can load that pose up, but my experience has just been, yeah, if it's there, uh, it's sort of, it, it looked better, you know, like it yeah. ends up looking better in the end. So, I mean, we could play around with that with this guy too. Uh, like, I think it could be cool. Um, if we're, you know, if we're thinking like have the arms being different length and stuff like that, right? That it would make sense that his shoulders sort of drop, right? Like on this on this mutated side. Yes. Um, you know where you can pull this down. Maybe this side gets pulled in a little bit more, right? Yeah, uh, it's heavy on one side, right? Because it's yeah, yeah, pulling like and... it's over overdeveloped, right. and yeah, yeah, we can play around with the hump, um, keeping it at like a low subdivision level. But we can play around with the hump. It's sort of grown out into pull this like to pull this volume in and sort of pull down here just to like try to sell like it's sort of all like mm, like pulling out right yeah where you get that like that full volume pulling up but yeah we'll keep pushing and change it up as we go so i think it'd be it'd be more uh you want him to also look a little bit like he's in pain too right with some of his his uh issues because it's like no one said, you know, living forever, right? Like being immortal is a, uh, uh, it's not painful, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think it's just part of the 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 curse from the gin that cursed him, right? Where it's just like he thinks, you know, it's like your brain, you you know, you have this fantasy in your head of like, oh, I'm immortal, and you know, I'm gonna live forever, and I'm all powerful, and all. And this you kind get of messed shit. up. Yeah, but it's just like that's not the reality of it, right? Yeah. Um, it's like yeah, you can, but you're gonna be a you know, a cripple, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think I think that is uh, is more interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, whatever idea, if you execute it well, it's gonna be good. It's just um, the execution is the, I think, the right forms, right proportions. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, no, we can, I mean, we can push all this kind of stuff up a bit more. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, everything like, I mean, in game design, it's like, it could change, right? Like if that story character changes, mm -hmm. then design has to change, right? Because it's got to make sense. Um, and uh, uh, it's like, it just has to be, yeah, I, I think both can feed into each other. You know, sometimes it's like, you try to match into exactly what, uh, design, you know, expert, but maybe your concept artist, right, or your sculptor can come up with something really interesting. Um, and some places will adapt to that and be like, holy crap, like, that's really cool. It still fits, you know, it still fits where we were thinking, but like, we can adapt to that and, uh, and sort of change that up a little bit, right. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's cool when places kind of push that aspect of it, right. Um, because I think it's like, you get like more uh, personality that comes through people feel like they've had input on the team too people are generally you know when you feel like you had input then you're you know most people especially artists right like you yeah. put 
more love into it. Like it almost becomes like a personal piece of work, even though obviously we don't. It's not. It's not ours. Like right? we're, you know, fulfilling other people's uh, dreams, right? On these these sort of projects. But um, I think I think there's a lot of uh, potential to that stuff where it's it's, it's like sort of unspoken of, but um, making artists happy in that sense is is kind of a a, a great thing there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You guys have any questions ask in the chat yeah i, I can't see i have to tab I'll, back I'll, I'll look at it don't worry about okay. it you just keep going i know we got a couple more people popped in from the beginning but welcome whoever all popped in while we yeah, uh, started here i'm trying to imagine what kind of armor he has yeah i mean i could even like we can just uh spitball some stuff too um while i'm working on this guy I'm trying to think of what i want to do with his form of like i'm thinking like if we have like say like kind of maybe straps going across yeah you want a uh, shoulder armor you want a straps but then also because he's on a high ranking type of person then you don't want him to look like a troll you know so maybe some nice uh garment with nice but the right arm because it's it's grown bigger, it could be like I don't know. Maybe he's using yeah, he has magic on that arm, and then he holds his staff on the left arm or something. Yeah, that's what I figured. But you want yeah. like I think it's cool. If he almost has a shawl on the right, and that yeah. is like his arm is sort of hidden. Yeah, when it comes out, like you could do where these kind of straps. You know, say these are straps, right? Um, they could have some kind of incantations or whatever uh you know attach them but the reason i was just thinking of that was like because then if, just as an example if we do something like that you can really push the volume like between them right because it's like the growths are like pulled tight oh you know, i see what around. you mean yeah yeah like as if it's there and it's been growing over exactly and causes exactly because he's wrapped his arm with these incantations or whatever yeah, yeah. like his arm is just sort of growing uh around it yeah that um, makes sense. so i think there's uh some cool potential with that um yeah, I mean, I could draw out some 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 straps there, and then that could just be a reference point for you, right? Yeah. Someone says, "How about uh, an arbor equal to a fee? If you, what's the name? I can't read it." <laughs> oh, from three hundred. Yeah, from three hundred. Yeah, that's like the. Uh, oh, I see. Guy, yeah, right? it looks like that guy a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah, it does. I yeah, mean, that's I'm, one of the guys we talked about too, right? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Early on. I mean, the goal is we want to make him look more. Like a king who has turned into a, a monster, you know. Um, so the the idea we talked about, me and G Greg, was basically we um, present some of those um, stuff that actually shows that he was a king, and he he is still is a king, but in a different form. So we don't want to like make armors that are like trolls, if that makes sense. The armor should be more majestic, but then we want to have damage on the armor as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of his props is what's going to show, uh, it's what's going to show uh, his nobility, right? Yeah, exactly. The nobility is a is a key. Yeah, that that'll be like a big part of where that kind of stuff comes in. Again, I I know we're, we're I think uh, I think for the most part, yeah, we should have his we should have this area completely covered. I think just because having your belly showing, it makes him feel sloppy, maybe you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to really mess around with this side too much. Um, I won't mess around with this. I mean, I'm just, whatever, my brain was just trailing there. So I just play with that. But yeah, I think, I think we should have this discovered. So then that way, um, yeah, he doesn't get that kind of sloppy vibe to him. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we can sort of. Uh, I want to do some fabric for this guy with Marvelous Designer. Yeah, I think that'd be nice. Because you get some really interesting drape folds happening yeah. over, uh, you know, how his forms are, right? Yeah, his arm, his big arm. I don't want to go with that idea, like, because that then that that will change his arm quite a bit, right? Like, if I put that volumes into his arm, I think, uh, yeah, should do it. I now. mean, we can, we can, yeah. I mean, do you yeah. have anything in mind for the armor, like any specific design? Well, I think, like I said, my brain was just thinking again, like if we do like 
if he has um if he has these like incantation wraps you know on this side you know that may you know try to keep them away from there what i was actually and, thinking we could and the piece some... here yeah, yeah yeah but the the piece there because so i'm thinking since we wanted to pick some stuff from persia doesn't have to be exactly that but then there's like some interesting designs that we can pick i was actually thinking a combination of leather and some uh, bronze or or gold you know so maybe mm -hmm. he could have like an armor on the shoulder like i did last time maybe a big piece and then a, a couple of smaller pieces that are wrapped with those lines that he actually created um on the and then and then forearm piece could be again the same thing my dog is going to bark teddy stop it let me cl close the curtain i'll be back in a second yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'll check Sorry. the chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, he can have big pauldron skulls on that big arm. The only thing is, if you put like, if you put a big piece of weight here, like say if you, if you put a big pauldron here. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Just something. No, no, I'm, I'm just I'm more practical. Like yeah, like a piece of armor there. Uh, it could end up being too like too lopsided, too heavy, right? Yeah. You almost, like, balance it out the opposite way well, um where like if this arm is a you know again like if we're gonna like not crazy like that that's everything um if we're gonna blow this out where it's like pulled around tight on the straps and whatever you would almost want to add a pauldron here you know um like for crude sake uh like just show whatever right like mm -hmm. you'd almost want to add something there to to balance that out i also want to put something on his chest like last time maybe it could be like a big um thing that protects the center which is like the heart like i did on my concept last week but then also we want to have a symmetrical shape so um i don't know if i can draw uh there's no way to draw here but then imagine like on his chest you say yeah like and let me see if i can share on my screen something quickly so i want to share something that one of my students is doing let me see if I can I mean, open it. I'm just going to extract some quick straps, like, anyways. Do you see what um, I have here? This is a work one of my students is working on right now. Oh, cool. But, but the, you see how this is not symmetrical? There's like leather piece. And then um, I thought maybe the, the big arm that you have could have something here with some elements here. But then uh, for the chest, we could have this is another student, something like this to protect the chest. Mm -hmm. Maybe this could work actually. Yeah, I think as long as we don't show the belly, I don't, you know, I don't mind whatever we do with the chest. I just think, yeah, like as long as the belly's, he's got, you got to show like some kind of uh, yeah. fancy aspects that were from his past, right? Yeah. Um, like whether it's the fabric or whatever, like we were talking about. Um, yeah, I think as long as we do that, then then it's fine, right? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm open. If you want to do anything for, um, for the armor, if you have something in mind, I don't want, like, I don't care. Like I could just take the silhouette if you if you do something i can just take the silhouette and build on top of that mm -hmm. if you have something specific in mind you see you know what i'm saying yeah like if yeah, you just I do a I rough mean, quick I, separation whatever and then if you like yeah. the silhouette I, I can just build the armor exactly that way yeah i think already where you were going last time i think like i said we if we pushed it to that that mm -hmm. uh that vibe i think it can work uh well as long as we add again like make sure he looks less a warrior more like um more ritual right like yeah more yeah yeah um, i just think there's there's more potential there the reason uh, i'm saying if you want to pick something is because of the the uh, the straps that you mentioned you want to put them in so if you want to like i don't know if you want to quickly separate something on the shoulder and put the straps at, so so you have those pressure points it's up yeah, to you yeah, or I mean, we can play, add it later well, at the end yeah at the end that's such a good yeah 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 let's do yeah, that and then, oh, yeah that makes sense if we don't get to it um like on the live we can uh go back and forth on that together yeah like, for sure um i was just thinking like yeah like you know you always see like big arms like this but it's kind of cool when you have those uh, yeah arms, definitely like, want to so see the that mass like separated where you just get that that kind yeah. of interesting unique shapes and so what the other um, thing you could do on the on the right side the rib cage you already did it a little bit maybe you can even add more um more uh emphasis uh, on the lat, lat muscle, the latissimus dorsi and uh, serratus, and even the rib cage, like make it as if his 
his rib cage growing bigger as if there's a, I don't know does it make sense like that whole yeah section I mean that's that's chest. what I mean like I want to go like right now just starts off but I mean it'd be even interesting to do to start doing like really crazy stuff on him right like yeah um, like what I quickly did on the first session like, maybe even know, a port portion of the bone like rib cage is out like as if it's grown too big and getting through their skin and muscle you know what I mean <laughs> that's But gonna again, be creepy this is, this is all I think. If we show if we show his belly, it makes him feel like a. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the character. The character from 300, right? Then he starts yeah. to feel too much like that, maybe. Yeah, we don't want to show the belly, but uh, um, we can show areas, <laughs> and then I can, we can build the armor around, around that. If that makes sense, you don't want to. Yeah. yeah like, because it, yeah, like you said, we don't want to make him like a troll or the guy from 300 exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, whoops. Um, if we have. Where some of this form is like kind of cutting in here. Okay. Do something for stat volume here a bit more. Daniel is asking if you use fiber mesh. Yeah, he he just did the beard. Yeah, yeah. but I that's like beard as crude as I get with it. Yeah, and very then, quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes even just to do that, if I know like where the character already is at, and I'm not going to change it too much. I'll do like a really rough groom in action and then just export it as geo and bring it to ZBrush and then just yeah. inflate it, you know, just to get something there. Yeah, I think even like pushing some aspect like that, like almost like these kind of, you know, growth. I'm not, I'm not going to think about the topology like game mesh and stuff right now because no, no, game mesh has production anyways. We'd have, to, it, yeah. we'd have to rebuild it like because something like this. I mean, these hold up you know enough i would say yeah they would hold up enough but like anything further from the silhouette than that you know then you start to you know if it gets yeah, close up and you start to see those hard edges but sometimes the production too you have to go with the budget and if the budget is the budget then you know. <laughs> yeah yeah so, well and also like if it's like <laughs> you're trying to reuse big meshes you know because a lot of projects that's what they do um where it's like oh even though this guy's creature he's still human for all sorts of purposes so like we got to reuse our bash uh, because we want the you know the vertex order match and all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. um i'll sort of just go with it and then we can go if we have to change it we can we can change it right um but yeah i think yeah having some kind of nasty growth stuff that comes out um you know from these forms here i think mm -hmm. would be quite interesting um it's just sort of like pushing it on itself while you do that i'm gonna quickly do some search for armor design yeah, yeah. And then I think even like push this in more get on this side and then play around with that. Like we could put Maybe it's like really affecting his neck on more one side of his face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as if like, like you want to make one side heavier overall. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it could just be like pulling down even. Um, the teeth in here still like a little bit. Oops. There's so much can be done for the armor. Like that. Yeah, just to try to maybe close this gap a little bit here. I'm imagining some stuff right now in my head for the armor. 
Yeah, like I said, I mean, if we could push it where it's almost like ceremonial, I think something like that could be interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We want him to be protected too, not not like a knight, you know, but just practical enough. So I'm thinking yep. a nice belt with really designed buckles could be a lion head in front of the belt because he was a good king before. And then some ornamented buckles, not, not just, oh, there's an ad showing up on YouTube. There's crazy, uh, if I just disappear, there's like crazy thunder lightning happening out here right now. So <laughs> What's that? It's like oh, thunder, like rumbling. Oh, I, I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but it's just like rumbling. Oh, no, we don't hear uh -huh. it. But if, if, it, if, if you get disconnected, we'll continue next week. But should be yeah. good. I guess we are good for now. Yeah, we're good for right now. I go until I have my fire started. So we're good. Yeah, I think pushing something like that. Good. I'll clean it up after. I'm actually finding some nice references for the armor. There's so much can be done. Yeah, I mean, in all sense, he's almost like a creepy priest, right? Um, yeah. Like he is that essentially, like a, you know, I always, you know, we're playing around with him being Persian, you know, um, but my, my brain, I guess, it still just thinks, I guess, more like the most iconic aspect, you know, like a really creepy Pope. Yeah, kind of yeah that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think just as uh, more unsettling, you know. Mm -hmm. in that sense. Personally, for people to know, I'm just searching on Pinterest for some artwork or armor designs and stuff, and then pick the the ones that I like, and maybe get some ideas from this, get some ideas from that. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I found something very interesting. Yeah, maybe after this one, maybe next one, uh, we can do on uh, Discord and then people, because then people can talk, you know? Yeah, I mean, definitely we can. I think that'd be cool just to, I mean, those hearing people talk, uh, like, like, you know, want to do stuff with buddies um, all time, it's like, or the, the some of the one on ones that I've done, um, just hearing people chat. Yeah, that's quite it's, uh, like that. it's fun. It's exciting. Yeah, like that and uh, up here. I found some interesting armor that I can take use as an example. You know. It's okay. What's up, Josh? And uh, with at, I like that an acillator. Um, as he said, maybe he'd grown his own armor and explore his areas. Yeah, I mean, I think that could be uh, interesting too, right? Like, I mean, it's really early. Like, I don't, I don't, like, at this time, you know, it's like, I, I usually don't think, like, oh, I'm going to skip, you know, this up or whatever, right? But, um, you know, where it's like, this can be gross cracks, you know, uh, cracks, mm -hmm. scabs, but it is a cool uh, surface um, treatment that we can add after, right? Like I said, yeah. I still might push his forms even bigger, like on this arm, like, uh, you know, without getting too nuts, like maybe it's just, you know, and maybe it's almost even hard, you know, like hard for him to bend this fucking arm, you know, like. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's actually pretty. Even, even the treatment, like as he gets down to the palm, like maybe even down here, it just starts like, again, this a little crude at it's first. It's painful, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, where it's like. You know he's got this little tapered wrist like maybe it's it's actually just it's just ballooning out right um and then i can add interesting shapes to that after uh, yeah i found some interesting design that we can use yeah like maybe pulling this in and then tapering it in here it's like 
it's kind of ballooned out, you know, where he's, he's starting to get some of that nastiness coming, breaking the silhouette as well. Yeah, those are interesting. And then again, we can play around with that um, when it comes to uh, if we if we do like where he's got some straps that can cut through this kind of shit, right? And then pull those shapes around it. But yeah, I mean, right now it's just yeah, it's in the sketch state, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just more just playing around with the forms. It's easy enough for me to like knock the forms back and then um, and then add that that kind of volume there, right? Yeah. I don't know if I want to go too gnarly up there right now. I think try to keep that oops. Keep that more calm for at, just at the moment, just to just here. Yeah. yeah, I think even like, hmm. You know what we could do? One... Okay, sorry. Uh, you know, I had one ornamental thing on his bicep, on yep. the armor. Maybe because his arm grew, that one could be putting a lot, like it, the, the thing doesn't grow, right? It was just a design with gold and whatever. That doesn't grow. So that puts a lot of pressure into the arm. And then I had like loops, you know, golden loops on the forearm. Maybe some of them are broken and opened up, but they're the, like still pressuring on the forearm here. And then you have the forearm armor. It's kind of, dim, you know, this figure yeah, I mean, in a I way. Some of this stuff, it's like once you get, uh, once you play around with some of the armor ideas, then I could quickly just add, I could just add layers, right? Or morphs just to push on that crazy crazy uh, aspects. Like if you're saying if he has like, like a van brace here, is that what you're saying? Yeah. And then like, and then if this is kind of grown out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Something like that as well. Right. It's kind of grown out around it. Yeah. Just a little bit here and there, but obviously uh, it's going to be well, a bit different, but yeah, that makes sense. It's like when your finger, like, uh, I didn't have my rings, right? My, I didn't have my ring on luckily, but I got stung. Like I was moving wood in our property. And, I got stung like three times by a wasp, like on my pinky finger oh, and then on my ring finger twice, like well, by a couple wasps. Um, but it's like if I would have had my ring on my whole finger, like puffed up, right? Um, but it's like that look of like yeah, the pressure. Skin is grown around their, their yeah. ring, right? It's a, uh, it's such a cool, interesting look, and it's I don't know, it's it's not used enough, like in uh, in games, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Where it's like you just don't see it enough, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't see it enough uh often enough rather i mean the recent games i don't know just starfield came out and i looked at it i'm not gonna play it i don't have time but there's i don't know games are not the same like there was i don't know if i'm like that or do you notice it as well design wise character wise um, I think right now it's like there is a big push for for sci-fi stuff at the moment, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess there there is like a demand there for for sci-fi. Um, I, I would love to see more, uh, like we you know fantasy type. We, we have we, well, we have like with when it comes to sci-fi. I mean, we have like cyberpunk. You know, I played I played the game when it first came out. It was obviously there's you know plenty of document documentation right how buggy and for a yeah. lot of people like whatever right. Um, but then I did play it later after I just never got around to finishing it. Um, and it was, uh, it was really cool, you know, and maybe Lords like, of Fallen you... is going to be the game that will change. There's also something called lies of P. Yeah. That Pinocchio game. Yeah. I don't know. Is it it's not Pinocchio? Is it? Yeah, it is. is it's it? like, it, I think it is Pinocchio. Yeah, oh, like interesting. That. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a bloodborne type of souls type of game. They just copied the same, I guess. 
Oh, that's interesting. That's a big difference. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Even just if you imagine him trying to talk and he's just like a <laughs> drooling old, yeah, he's just drooling <laughs> old man, right? Like he's just kind of it's just spit kind of coming out of his mouth. It's like, you know, you you almost you know, you, you expect to see someone like again, you're like, Oh, this is the king and he's uh you know, he's immoral, blah blah blah. But then it's like the reality of it is this is fucking mass, right? Yeah. <laughs> And then, like anyone who stares at him for too long, you know, or uh, any servants who look at him for too long, it's like he just fucking gets them killed mm-hmm. and eats them, you know. Because um, God forbid, you know, you uh, embarrass him, right? Yeah. I think. But yeah, I mean, think there's that aspect makes it disgusting. What's that? I think aspects like that make it a little bit mm-hmm. more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unsettling, right? Where it's just like you gotta disfigure his face too a little bit on the. Yeah, I will play with that side. Right now, it's still all symmetrical, but I just don't know what I want to do. That's I think it'd be interesting almost to treat it like I'm doing a character for myself right now, but uh, he has like a burn on his side. Um, uh, but, you know, he's just like a normal human. Mm-hmm. But I think maybe even treating this side like like a burn victim side could be kind of interesting. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, maybe like maybe deforming more bu- bubbles and whatever you know yeah like that's yeah like uh, bigger bigger eye bigger eyebrow on that section like the bridge yeah coffee I mean, yeah. you know as if like the bone has grown bigger yeah or like the just the skin the skin is folded in up on itself here right that too yeah oh yeah that's interesting something like that um but then same like this eye uh because it's kind of folded up and mm-hmm. sort of looked up he has to sort of squint it you know just to see a little bit right yeah yeah um i think i have whoops uh even like because i mean if the eye is like a dead eye anyways you know that's, yeah uh, creepy totally yeah and then uh, i'll okay, just it's like uh, <laughs> and then I'll sculpt this up. You know? Just move all this out. I would make his eyebrow bigger too, like just that side of the eye. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, what I wanted to do, I, I wanted to like hug, like the flesh to, to hug here. So like, keep this side have the angular, clean, round shapes. Mm. You know, uh, to show that definition. And then if we push it on this side, it's like because the skin sort of has pulled down, you would lose. Some of the angular, uh, you know, vibe yeah. to, to his skin, right? Almost like yeah. everything pulling, like, you know, pulling down, uh, you know, potentially. Yeah, you right? have a like, flow, basically, a direction. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like, it's kind of flowing. It's flowing down. And, you know, the guy's That's just good. fucking mess, yeah. you know, on this side, right? But maybe that could even play into uh, maybe the design of, like, you know, maybe his helmet has, like, a guard that protects the side of his face. You know, so yeah. then all, all, you, all you see is like his eye a little bit, mm-hmm. right? But you, but you can see the skin is uh, sort of um, congealed, sort of over, right? I yeah, think I'll, I'll be back in a second. You continue. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Something like that could be kind of cool. Uh, let me just see. Save it a bit. And you know how ZBrush can be sometimes. Or crash. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe something playing with that that vibe, and then also what I would do is groom, and I can I can sort of uh, adjust some of that on the groom side itself. You know, have some like room coming down, but then it's a little bit more full on this side. And then, uh, yeah. And maybe it's just because I'm doing a personal character for myself with this kind of burn face is sort of pulling into that vibe a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's getting there. Like if I go, uh, let's see if I still have a mark yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> Someone says it's starting to look like Hazmat Chimaev, the UFC fighter. <laughs> 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 after you <UFC. laughs> that's correct actually there was um <clears throat> I, I post my you know it more... needs to be like more it needs to be like more <laughs> swollen up right he punched <laughs> yeah there was a uh, you know i post my workout videos on instagram and somebody somebody commented the same like you look like husband <laughs> 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 and I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, he's right actually on the video because of the beard. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know who is the guy, right? Or you don't? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I know the face. And sure. <laughs> There's another guy, though, too. I don't know his name. Uh, Habib? He has, same, he has the same sort of face, right? Yeah, Habib. It's Habib. Is it him? He's new, though. He's a new fighter. Oh, I don't know. I, the new one, I don't know. <laughs> Because every time there's a new fighter, and then they talk, you know, shit about all the guys who've been doing it, and then they go on a fight, right? Like, yeah, but like, he's actually very right. This this looks exactly like him. If you search his image, you will see. I gotta look it up. That's right crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks like him. Especially because you, you kind of removed his uh, mustache. Yeah, I mean, I just because I'm just trying to think like. If it's the burn side, well, not burn side. I, again, my brain's thinking burn because my character burn. Um, if this is the the sort of looser side to things, right? Yeah, dude, this is um, looking awesome. I love it. I think yeah, it could be cool to have that. What right? was your technique there when you did the um, the eye? Did you mask it with the occlusion map? Yeah, I mask like by smoothness. Sometimes oh, I see. I stuff see. like that. I, sometimes I'll play with the settings, and then I'll, I'll drop down like subdivisions where it's lower on purpose um mm -hmm. and then uh inflate a little bit um and then bring it back up just to get some of the shapes and then and then i just go in and yeah like this like it's like one two three it's too repetitive there right? yeah so it's like i can quickly go in and then a little bit more fat and then mm -hmm. add a little bit more weight to it so it catches that little light shadow underneath right just so it starts to feel more disgusting yeah that's that's actually awesome and right now you're just using the, are you using inflate and the standard brush? I'm using clay too. I, oh yeah, because I I have nine hotkeys. <laughs> oh, um, so you change. Oh so yeah, I would love to use like uh, the remote. You know, I've all my work one that ha it has like the this, uh, this remote thing, right? Whatever mm. the, the Cintiq. But um, I have an OG Cintiq like from uh, 2007 model, whatever that was, 2006 or some model. Um, but I would love to use the, the keys, but it's just like, I, I'll have all my brushes on, uh, keys. So yeah. the, not enough buttons there. So I just still stuck to using the mouse, but, uh, yeah, like, you know, this is just a clay build up with just like a soft, right. And then this yeah, is that was like actually that. good, dude. I would put that thing there. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no, put... we'll, we'll, we'll make our way up here. We'll make our way up here. <laughs> because again, if we're thinking about what he's wearing, um, again, if you have to also think about projects, like. If this is for a game, you know, and then you're going to talk to the, this guy and there'll be cutscenes with him, you know, it'd be interesting if, yeah, like, uh, you know, you see him with all the gear on again, like yeah. maybe half his face is occluded, right? Almost like uh leper, you know, lepers wear the masks, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe half his face is occluded. Um, so all you see, you know, all you see is this side, right? And then you're like, yeah. oh, he's disgusting, but he's not that bad, right? Um, and then, yeah, and then maybe if you're fighting him, you know, it's like he removes everything, uh, shows like, you know, he has to, cause it's well, the only, like, he can barely move. Right. But yeah, maybe still... you're, maybe you're fighting him and you destroy his armors and then you, you see his body. So it could be like his body is covered with armors. You have to destroy the armors. They fall apart. And then on the second also, stage, the only thing it... I have when games do that, then it, it, what it's saying to the player is like, this guy's so strong that you're beating on him already. And then he's going to take that off. Right. And like, I think it's a way creepy reveal if like the player sees someone like this, um, you know, and then you're about to, you know, you, instead of that stage, you replace that stage with like, you know, his most devoted, you know, uh, followers, right? Like cult yeah. followers. And then when you get to him, it's like, he, it's like painfully takes everything, you know, like, like removes his garments, right? So he can have as much mobility as possible to cast on you and do that kind of shit, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's like to the player then it's like fuck if i now now as a player you're like if i can get near this guy 
I can fuck, you know, he's dead. He can't even fucking move his arm, right? Like, yeah. but the whole point is like, he's going to be casting all the shit and casting, uh, you know, AOEs and, you know, area effect spells, right? To slow the player down. And, you know, you're trying to take cover. And then it's like, becomes a like move from cover point to cover point and, you know, get close enough to him, right? Uh, to withstand his magic. And then essentially, if you get close enough to him, he's dead, right? Like, yeah. you just can't let you get close. Like, um, it's like the reverse of games where, you know, uh, like Plague Tale, like one of my uh, favorite games, in the first and second, um, in that you die, right? Like if the rats get you, you're dead. Um, mm -hmm. If uh, like the bigger brute guys get you, or even the, the smaller enemies get you, you're dead instantly, right? Um, but it would be like the reverse. It's like if you could get close to him, the fight over, but that's a challenge. <laughs> hold, yeah, like, hold, hold on a second. I'll be back again. Yeah, yeah. You continue? Yeah, I'll just... Uh, but yeah, um, for everybody listening, yeah, I mean, I think uh, as for, but I guess that's more like a, I guess a game design um, aspect. But I think for character artists, um, just like concept artists, it's kind of cool to think of things uh, along those lines, right? Um, even if they don't go where you're, you know, you're sort of pitching, it's good to think of the character in that kind of way, and because it might help you uh, imagine different aspects of them, and you just never know they. You know, I think that's a really cool idea um, and want to, you know, take that on. And then, uh, you know, that might end up changing the, you know, the gameplay aspect of the final fight, you know, uh, or if, uh, whether it's a final fight or if it's just a boss fight just in general, right? Um, I think it's good to, to think about things like that, uh, whether, you know, like I said, whether it goes somewhere or not, um, I think it's good. And it's fun. Like, you know, you get into games because I imagine... Uh, I would, you know, most people like playing games, you know, <laughs> so they got into games, um, or you Making like games the... is not playing games. <laughs> That's very different. Yeah. But it, I mean, for me, I, I still always, uh, think of like, oh, if this was a game, like, you know, or, or if I, you know, like, what would I do with this kind of character, you know? And, uh, that's, that's sort of the way I think about a lot of that kind of stuff. And yeah, like I said, with this guy, I think it would just be cool to, to kind of, flip the script a little bit and so like most games and you're like this guy's pathetic right and then he's just like this old man you know um who's talking trash to you because you're on his lawn right when you're a kid and i say like, get the hell off my lawn you know <laughs> um but yeah he he's pathetic you know visually but insanely powerful from a distance right yeah. um but then if you get close enough to him it's over right like he's dead like there's nothing he can do um Sort of like, uh, what was his name? Kevin, right? From Sin City. Uh, I don't remember. Elijah Wood's character from Sin City. Um, when Marv, I guess in Marv's storyline there, he's like, gets all cut up by him because he, he moves so fast and silent, you know? But mm -hmm. then uh, eventually he gets him, right? And handcuffs himself to him. And then he's like, where the fuck are you going to go now? Yeah. You know? When when did Sin City <laughs> came out? Oh, it was a while ago. Like 2000. And Seven, eight, six, seven, yeah, yeah like, something like that. Something, yeah, that was a long I was time young ago. at the time. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Then there was like a, a game to kill for. Um, and then, uh, what was the other one? The Spirit or something like that? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I didn't see that one, but yeah. I'm pulling this back in more now, like we were talking about. We want to pull this many people don't know that we are doing these lives otherwise we would have a lot more viewers how many people i haven't uh swapped over let me see how many right now there's 22. Yeah, i mean that's pretty much what uh we were like between 22 and 30 that's when everybody was watching no, last week was more like 50. uh any tips for getting better in anatomy um study, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> study. Just practice and study and uh I would, you know, I think it's like a combination. Like your video is gone. I lost My video is gone. Yeah, it shows your Google only. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, it like swapped over to my other webcam. Oddly, that's kind of weird. I'll keep it off until you fix it. But. uh yeah, one second. Mr. Green, that's his name. I would say if you want to, like what Greg said, just 
one of the things I would do, I would just make a simple, uh, you know, yeah. bonus structure with, uh, you know, just focus on primary shapes and then build the muscles on top of it. Learn what their names are, what, why they are named certain ways, because that's going to help you to remember the muscle better. And then, you know, make something on top of that, like a skin. And it's going to take time. It's not easy. It will take forever. Yeah, but um, long, long process. I would say it's a combination of like, of like, I think you'll pick it up faster if you spend time uh, studying it like on 2D side as well. 2D so as have, well, yeah. That helps. Have to feedback to like yourself drawing shapes because, uh, you know, if you if you spend some time in ZBrush, you know, or Mudbox or Blender, whatever, right? Um, think about it like afterwards to yourself, like. Oh, I just spent time in there, you know, six hours, whatever, three hours, doesn't matter, right? Like, just think about it and then think about what uh, you can remember. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember doing that stroke that, you know, like, oh, I remember making this stroke that made that lump, you know? Um, yeah. Like, but if you did that with a pencil or a piece of clay, you, you could remember that from like years ago. At least for me, that's how it, it, it works in my head. Um, but I have a hard time remembering, like, every single you know when you look at your history here like look we're at 970 right mm -hmm. so that's 970 strokes right onto this mesh uh yeah and it's like how many of those can you actually remember but if you're sitting there drawing um like with a purpose like i think you can remember a lot more uh drawing definitely that. helps yeah. like yeah i never went into it crazy but even i did a, a little bit long time ago like 17 18 years ago and then even before that that helped me a lot just learning a little bit basically draw by hand you know mm -hmm. i mean if i want to get back to it now i can because uh, i know how to learn right now I'm more mature if that makes sense when you get older you understand how things are done better and uh what time is an issue like if you have time what greg said is perfect because you get to make mistakes faster and learn from it. Yeah. In trading, think, takes time, right? You build the muscle. And... A lot of people think one thing's like really fast, right? And yeah, it's like, that's a mistake. I, I, was, I was part of that too. Like, you know, I, I never uh, touched clay until, like, I mean, as a kid and whatever, right? Like, but like properly touched clay until uh, it's about six years ago now. Um, and then in my head, it's like I wanted it to be like, when I first, you know, started 3D, like I went from never touching 3D, you know, being a construction worker. And then also a couple of years later, I was, you know, told myself and then I got a job in the industry. Right. And it's like, but that's not realistic with everything, you know? And, uh, I think it's like, uh, maybe that's happened to, I know talking to other to friends and other people where they picked up stuff like really fast, but then your brain, you know, sometimes you're like, Oh, I expect to pick up everything this fast. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fast is and a problem. Like uh, there, there is. When they take time, and then, yeah, yeah and like, long time, like years and years and years and years, right? Like, Honestly, it's just a matter of doing it and not. Like you, you want incremental changes, a slow changes. You want to learn it slowly over time. Someone asked if the, if the sculpting by hand will help. I I said like anything you do with hand helps. The other thing helps is basically you can nowadays that we can use is buy scans. From 3D scan a store and just study those anatomies, different poses, different bodies. Mm -hmm. That's something it didn't exist in the past. You can even get those and print them and look at them, you know, as a statue or something if you can. That helps yeah, I think again. That, that those resources are really crazy, right? Yeah. Like before, if you know, not everybody has access to be like, I just want to go to like a live sculpting session or a life drawing session. Um, and even now, a lot of those workshops, like if you want to go travel, like, well, okay um it that's like a, a big trip right um yeah you know because everything is you know quite expensive with that kind of stuff right from flight flight to hotel uh and so on so it's just like yeah you have to be really dedicated towards it you know um yeah but now with that kind of stuff i mean nothing will ever replace going somewhere and uh seeing something in person you know um yeah. it will just not it, it just won't get replaced with that like um there's something about it that's different it's also like the atmosphere in the air because you know especially uh you know i tell people like workshops are like amazing things to take um, yeah well, one thing i want to say is someone is saying 
um, I'm interested more about this information, how to learn, right? So there is there is this factor that you can learn. There's like so many ways. Learn with, you know, drawing or sculpting or any of, uh, like, whatever. But the point is, in my opinion, like, the way I see it, if you want to get good at anatomy, for example, regardless of how you do it, you got to study and understand the muscle. Like, go deep into it and look at it from all angles, different shapes, where is it connected, you know, not just uh, artistically, but also study it. Uh, that's what I would do, like uh, in a scientific way, if that makes sense. You know, like if you if you can go somewhere and see a body dissection, like real human body. Yeah, in a real hospital. cadaver, yeah. Those... Yeah, cadaver, yeah, exactly. And just understand how the shape of the muscle is. The mistake people make is just, they just look at something from the front view. The rookie mistake is like that, or inside view and three quarter, and that's it. When I sculpt the hand, I just, even you, right? You just rotate weird angles. Like sometimes I look at it from this angle because I want to make sure this curvature is correct, you know? And that's how you do it. You have to like really study and a study means be curious about it and don't worry about finishing anything. Just focus on how's this muscle? What is the extensor digitorum? What is it doing? Where is it connected? Where is it ended? You know, oh, or, or how is the elbow? Most people, like if you ask them, how is the forearm rotating? They don't know how the forearm rotates. They just don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I mean, and, a lot uh, of people don't know, don't even know that in your forearm there's two bones, right? Yeah, there's two bones. They don't know what, why. So if you want to understand it better, basically your elbow, ulna, is connected here, right? It's a joint that rotates. But the, this bone doesn't rotate at all. It's static. It's the the other bone that actually rotates over. So there's like, see when you, when you basically put, uh, you know, rotate your wrist, it's not going up and down a straight. It's it's tilting towards this direction because there is an opening. Um, so basically, it rotates like this. Let me open this model. Maybe I can show you guys. It's hard to explain this way. But the point is, you you want to like go into it with with passion and uh, study it as much as you can, really deeply. If that makes sense, like understand each section. Don't just be like, I want to make a beautiful body, you know? I think too, like getting, uh, like for me with clay, like, I feel like I picked it up really fast because I got advice. Like I went to different workshops with different people that approach things differently. Yeah. So because one way that someone approaches it is not going to be the way that might not everybody's be everybody's different right? yeah yeah everybody's and i different. think i think varying it up too is great you know i mean again like yep. uh i've taken a lot of like online workshops with different artists and uh classes and it's like sometimes just to see how they would approach the same thing you know yep. where it's like it's not a, you know i think some people actually look at something like i don't want to take the class with that guy like you know that girl like I'm just understanding different Whatever. people and then figuring out your own style. exactly yeah like you, you can't just look at somebody's thing sometimes and be like yeah oh yeah they're good but whatever I'm, I'm i'm better like but they might have like a completely different approach to you and then yeah. you might see that approach um you know if you took the time to you know to spend with them or whatever right and then you'd be like oh shit like i didn't think of it that way yeah. even though you're doing it really fast and efficient you know in your mind before you might see that approach and then be like that was really cool like i want to play around I mean, there's a now. lot of it, a lot of curiosity right you, you want to you're curious yeah. about how is this done like for example we were talking about this I was just saying how this works. I mean, if you just know this one thing, you're already ahead of many people in anatomy. So this um, bone is not connected. There's an opening here. It just rotates, right? You see, it's even the shape says that it's rotating. And it's also open here. So it gives you the, the opportunity, basically, for your wrist to rotate. So if I just make a joint like that and rotate it like this, that's how the forearm is rotating. See that? Oops. Do you see that gray? You know this already, but Oh I guess. <laughs> All right. I'm just yeah, showing it to no, everybody. Like, um that's why I've recommended to people so many times. Like uh Andrew Kors does this like amazing workshop in uh Vegas. I'm sure you've probably heard of it. I mean, everybody most people aren't sure know who he is because they have his uh his anatomy tools, right? Like his anatomy statues. Who? Behind their desk, a lot of you see, see videos of people. Oh, I see. They have the and, famous guy, the first one that was doing anatomy and yeah, like his workshop yeah. in person is is amazing, right? Because he, uh, you know, he worked from like a model, um, and then he builds it up like piece by piece in clay. 
Yeah. But but on, plus I he mean, has like big drawing boards and then he draws it out, like you sit down, and discuss it, and then he goes. If you ask them, things. they actually go deep into it, right? They understand the science behind it, they just know the name. Yeah, I mean, like he's like dissected cadavers and stuff like that. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the more the, this is the thing, the more you're exposed to something, the more you know about it, the more you're obsessed with it, you're just gonna you're just gonna learn it. it like that's how a human body is. I mean, you get into something and you just that's how we discover this stuff, right? I mean Homo sapiens, we, we started making fire, or even before that, humans, whatever a species of humans did it. And then we, we learned, okay, you can extract iron from soil or, or, you know, make mines and extract iron or, you know, different type of metals, bronze, mm -hmm. and melt them and make tools or use vol uh, volcanic uh, stones or whatever the name is. I uh, forgot the name of that, the one that, that is pretty sharp. They used to mix you know, spears and stuff. How did people learn those kind of things? They were in situations they had to figure out something. I, it, it's always an interesting thing with that, right? Because like, again, it goes back to like how we are in modern day, right? Like, I mean, even classical sculptors, like they took like forever, you know, sometimes to get good at what they do. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, like success, everything is, is quick expected. because of you're social back. media. But like things like what you're talking about, like, uh, I think it's hard for people to comprehend now because it's like that stuff didn't happen over like a single generation, you know, that happened over multiple generations, right? Where it's like, you think about like, oh, how do you know what, what mushroom to eat, you know? And it's like, maybe it took like, you know, four generations. So many people died. Of, yeah. So many yeah, just dying died. or getting really <laughs> sick. And then eventually they were like, my great, 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 grand, you know, like he was the first one. And now it's like, and then it's just, exactly. then for the people who've never seen that, they're like, oh my God, how do you learn how to prepare this? And it's like, it, to them, it's like, oh man, like, like, because it just seems like it's uh, second nature to that person. You know, it's like... you know, it's good to to have mentors because sometimes that old um, knowledge is gone. Like, for example, yeah. if you if you think about music as an example, or or even art, um, Da Vinci has only twenty pieces throughout his life. He just made twenty paintings. That's it. And uh, when you think about Da Vinci, he spent so much time, like fifteen years on Mona Lisa, or something like that. Or how long did it take? Uh, hold on a second. You, you go ahead. I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I think I think certain things just take time. Like they just take time, and everything in society now is, is everything's expected to be like instant. Um, you know, but I think well, art too. You want to have fun. <laughs> the whole point of doing it, you know, unless you're yeah. just in it for try to make money. <laughs> no, excuse me. Sorry. Um, I think the big point of doing it is because you're passionate about it. You really enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah. Cur curiosity that, behind it also is another thing. Yeah. You know, you're just too obsessed with it that you want to like learn why certain things happens on human body or why we do we have this muscle or uh, honestly, I, I always tell my students, if you want to learn anatomy, you got to learn the names because those names define what the muscle do like extensor digitorum. I said, right. It's extending the digits fingers it's called extensor digitorum so i mean um knowing that is i think it helps actually for me helped me to learn anatomy to the point that yeah, I, I mean it. when it comes to names i mean i think yeah if you understand the names like um like could people a lot of people don't know what medial or lateral means right like yeah um you know versus like inside outside of your body but i think it's like for me, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a combination. Like for some people learning the names, like, uh, they'll pick it up faster. Right. Yeah. Uh, other people, it's like drawing it, uh, sculpting it, like understanding like the form function of it versus the name, then it's faster for them. And like, I think yeah. it's just, you have to find what that way is for you. Right. But like, you have no to try, can, right. You have to try to, yeah, draw. no one can tell you exactly and be like, this is the only way you can do it. You have to try it. And like, and that's why, again, I recommend, like, if you can take um, workshop, actually, let me change the other year. Uh, if you could take workshops with as many people as you can, um, you know, uh, obviously within one budget, you know, um, I think that's where that stuff becomes super valid, right? Because then you'll learn from a bunch of different people how they might approach something. Um, and then you can sort of, you know, build your, your smorgasbord of, of doing things, yeah. um, you know, and then there's the other way of it's like, which I guess people don't really do these days, um, you know, like they used to, which 
you know, for me, I, I thought I, I would always have loved that aspect too, but it's like where you'd have people bring on like a straight up apprentice, right? Um, and then your whole process is trying to follow along with them and copy them. But then it's like, you're essentially just a ghost shell of that person, you know? So you still have to find your own voice. <laughs> yes. Like, so it doesn't really matter, you know, like you, you'll have to go through that process again anyway. So I, I guess that's why I sort of uh, prefer, yeah, if you can get to spend time with a lot of people who, you know, you look up, like you are inspired by, um, you know, uh, that stuff's important because you'll put more um, effort into the whole process of it, right? I mean, you should, uh, like everybody says, oh, you should put effort in because it's for yourself, you know, but we're humans and, you know, it, there is always that aspect of like, you know, sort of being, you know, not starstruck, but you're like, oh, I'm so, you know, this person's like a huge inspiration for me. And then, you know, generally that ends up making you push a little bit harder, right? Yeah. Maybe it's like a parental thing. You like want to please a parent, you know, you're like, look what I did, you know, <laughs> but, but it happens. And I, I've seen it happen with people who are young and I've seen it happen with people who are like in their late forties geeking out because someone joined the team and they're like, oh my God, this guy's so, you know, and they're like, super geeked out and they go crazy right and I, yeah. I think it's cool like uh i think it's a cool aspect of uh art you know yeah. But, uh, but yeah. do, you, do you add colors to your to your sculpt at some point um yeah sometimes i'll do like a quick poly paint right um and then i'll uh just kind of go quick with it just to get a vibe right um and then other times yeah with creature stuff i'll do it uh like more often you know but with human character stuff, it's like, like if we're doing this guy for production, even though he's a bit crazy, I'll probably like wrap a scan base color to him potentially, you know, mm -hmm. just to get like a grounded base tone. And then that would be like a rough base and painter and then everything on top of that. And then in the end, it might only be 20% left of it, but at least you have that kind of base information there. I mean, on my portfolio, you can see a lot of stuff that I've done, obviously, in the past where I've done everything like by hand, and I love doing that. But uh, again, if it's in production, if you tell, you know, a producer, like, oh, I need, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, if they're trying to budget out a character, like an entire story character, like, oh, you're going to get like 35 days. But then you're like, well, I need like 45 days because I want to do everything by hand, you know, like they might be like, yeah, you're not going to get 45 days, right? So, yeah. Uh, it's good to know different ways of doing things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Some, I mean, I, I always add color because that's going to change everything in ZBrush, you know, the, the way it looks and stuff. So when you present it, it's going to give people, because most people uh, in production, from my experience, they don't, well, except if they are an art director who did characters or understand, you know, the, the art itself as, uh, as a whole. They don't understand yeah, yeah. how it is with just gray met textures, no textures. I know. I, I I always try as long as I can at every place to just like present that way. Yeah. Um, Me too. Uh, in hopes like that it will get the you know get the point across. Um, and I've been pretty lucky with like uh, I guess most of the places I've been at like they they've gotten that point you know. But then I've also worked with clients yeah where um, they they're just like I can't see it you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, it gets, you know, tough if you're starting to sit there and be like, imagine this, you know, then they're like, <laughs> yeah. I can't. And then, yeah. yeah. And they'll quickly move to somebody else who can, uh, even if it's like, uh, like a lower quality, but if they can present that, like they will move to that because it's just easier for them to digest. Right. And in the yeah, end, exactly. again, if you're working, if you're working on someone else's thing, you're there to support them for like what their, uh, you know, vision is and their idea is, um, and it's like, then you have to, you know, you have to adapt and do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, again, when you work on personal art versus art for somebody else, um, you know, they're two two different things. Uh, the best scenario is like if you get in a place where those two things become like very close together, then it, it just means your job is more enjoyable, right? Um, doing that, but it, it doesn't always uh, happen. And I think. A lot of people coming into like fresh into the industry think that's how it is, you know, uh, and then they sort of get like a little bit disappointed if it's not. Um, and then they get like a little bit frustrated, angry really fast. And, you know, um, yeah, I think knowing, knowing that aspect to it is important, you know? Yeah. Cause there's just, I'm yeah. actually waiting to see what happens next year in the industry. It will be interesting. 
because of all the economy and all the changes. Game industry grew to $490 billion so far. How much was it in 2020? There was a lot of layoffs uh, the last week, though, right? So. Yeah. How many companies closed last week? Oh, there's a few. Like, I don't know if they closed, but there was layoffs. Um, it was a tough week for games. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So we're like just over, over like an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minutes in. Um, sort of see where we were starting with them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sort of gone, right? You almost want him, like while he's talking, like spit just coming out and shit, right? Like where he's just who? Like while he's talking, you want to imagine spit is coming oh, out. Oh, this guy, yes, him. yes, yes. Yeah, he's just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just a dirty guy. Uh, Corey Trevor said, why is that? Uh, we, uh, you talking about what Simon was talking about with game industry? Sorry. Maybe you can follow up so. on this. Yeah, there's a delay. Oh. I guess it's saying why is that for the like when I said it's gonna get worse before it gets uh, many reasons economy they're raising interest rates it has a lot of effect on everything so during pandemic interest rates were zero and uh, there was a lot of free money companies got loans and stuff like that without thinking about the future and they just wanted to grow and then uh, usually you know what happens when greed happens with greed comes comes pain right eventually it's going to change so i think um you see a lot of layoffs now because companies hire too many people plan for too many projects they couldn't even you know handle you know what i mean Does that makes sense so now they're in a situation they have to make a decision and um uh, Game industry has been growing for a long time, for 40 years now, almost 38 years, since 1983, actually 40 years. 1983 was the crash, and then it started going up again in 1985, almost 38 years, actually. So there, there should be a, you know, change. I'm not sure. I think strikes might have to do. It's going to, it's a, it's an, it's going to affect everything, right? I mean, I think there is a big change coming. It's not the end of it. Um, there's like um, changes, obviously. Things are adjusting based on the interest rates, based on what they hired in the past three, four years during the pandemic, and so on. Yeah, I think there's a lot of oh, there's a lot of overhiring for a lot of places. Yeah, right? overhiring for positions they don't they didn't need or uh, wrong calculations. Let's make this game. Everybody's gonna love it, and the, the game doesn't sell at all. They lose like hundreds of millions of dollars. That happens a lot recently. Um, so, I mean, trend is changing. Uh, yeah, I, I think 2024 will be interesting, but the industry should grow more from here. It should, uh, my expectation is it's going to go to, I don't know, 600 billion or something like that before a massive drop or something like that. So we have some times left. That's even more why it's it's important that you, like, whether it's with the job or your own process, right? Yeah. You find ways to enjoy, like, uh, how you're doing things. Yeah. You know? How you're doing things, picking the right job, you know, not just accepting any any offer because it's it's hard, right? The, the thing is, some of these big companies that are hiring big numbers, they they will they will be the one that will fail actually. Because they're out of ideas or they don't have any new ideas to work on. They're just doing the same thing over and over. And they're hiring based on the past experiences. And the generation is changing. So finding finding the right place um, is, is key, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just go, I don't know, I don't want to name companies. But work. say, I want to get a job in this company because past 10 years they did some amazing games, such and such game. And. I want to work on that, you know, 
then you get hired there because they have this massive idea, but they have greed also since they want to like sell, I don't know, DLCs, things like that. They do the wrong calculations based on the past experiences and they fail. And what's going to happen when you have a lot of overhead, you have to fire so many people, like lay off a lot of people. And they will give them like benefits, like right? I mean, three months, six months or whatever of severance packages, but that's that's a lot cheaper than spending millions, hundreds of millions on, on a new game that they think it, w- it wouldn't work. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think there's a lot of miscalculation. I mean, you, you might think that these companies are massive. They know what they're doing, but it's not really the case. The reality is far f- from that, actually. Yep. And I think, too, just the market sometimes, right? Um, like, sometimes projects that, I mean, you'll see people, like, early reviews, play tests, whatever. They'll be like, yeah, I don't see how this is going to be a success or I don't see how this is going to be a hit. You know, and it, it is, right? Um, a lot of egos, too, man. Like, you yeah, know, there's so much ego involved. Somebody has an idea and just want to make it and no, and doesn't care about any opinion of anybody. Or, or like, for example, all these microtransactions. I kind of missed miss the game industry in the past, like 15 years ago when you bought a game and you played the game and you finished the game and the second one came out. And uh, it was so much fun and joy, right? Every, everybody yeah. made games because they were super passionate about it. They loved doing it. Now it's turning into this uh, machine that they just want to make profit, unfortunately. Not everybody. There's like a lot of... Well, actually, it's not like before. It's hard to find a good game right now, right? I don't know, when, when, when was the last game you played and you really enjoyed? I don't know, maybe people can say it in the chat as well. Yeah, I think I mentioned it last week. Like, I mean, we, we, like I said, we really loved Play Tales and uh, I really loved Stray. It was great, you know. Um, it's such a great game. But yeah, it'd be interesting to know what, what people's uh, last favorite games were that they played that they had a really good time. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? Some of these big names... Um, <clears throat> They make a game and it fails. Like the games that you actually grow up with and you expect it to be amazing. Yeah, Elden Ring is an amazing game. I love that game. And after Elden Ring, it's actually hard to play another game. First Dragon Age. Oh, yeah, that was like old game, right? Yeah, God of War was amazing. Vampire Survivors. I mean, the only game I'm looking up, I mean, to play it right now is just Lords of Fallen. We'll see how it ter- it turns out. I'm looking forward to the most, uh, I guess, this upcoming season two, Alan Wake. We'll see how that one is. Because I, yeah. I love horror games. So. Is that Remedy is working on it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, every time I see Sam Blake, I can't. I, you know, like my first game on, uh, I guess it was like my, I got the Xbox, right? And then mm-hmm. uh, it came with Halo and uh, oh, what was the uh, was it NFL Fever or whatever it was, right? And then my first game that I bought um, was uh, Max Payne, right? So whenever I see Yeah, Sam Max Payne was amazing, before, right? Before I could see, still yeah, to this yeah. day, right? I just see beautiful. his face there, like on the model right yeah was, that was an amazing game and they did such a great job i hope they make another one of it like even the same i think they're working on making the same max Payne again but one of the things that are well they don't, own, they don't own it anymore right Rockstar. yeah it's rockstar it yes yeah, yeah yeah but then i worked on max Payne 3 when I was you worked on it yeah max Payne oh 3, that's yeah. cool yeah three wasn't I'm as in good it. i'm in it you can uh i'm like uh in the the cemetery one of the missions Oh, you're uh, you're actually <laughs> your face. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I think the, I remember the, it. Yeah, the I see it now. Voice actor who the guy just kind of sounds like me, and uh, you know, <laughs> I used to have really heavy like uh, New York like Brooklyn That's accent, crazy. You know, but I've been in Canada for so like you know what like fourteen years or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, the guy like comes out and he's like, "Oh, what the what the fuck's going on out here?" You know, and then he gets fucking shot by a sniper <laughs> in the head. You know, so that was. That I was think I remember first, that. Uh, that was my first little fame there. Uh, you, know. you had a chance to become a voiceover, right? Or or an actor. I, 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 yeah, I should. I, well, I didn't get to do the voice, but it just sort of sound, ended up sounding like me, like I said. But I should have <laughs> I should have tried to turn that into a career separately, right? Yeah, you can still, not too late. But yeah, that's interesting. And even if you look at, um, yeah, I mean, industry is shifting a lot. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's scary too in some ways. 
I don't know how, how many of you guys played uh, Starfield. There was so much advertising behind it, but I don't know. The rating was seven on IGN, and it's not exactly an open world. You go around and, and the universe, but then you just you're able to drop in one section of a planet. You know. I just saw from. I mean, I guess for me, what I those games generally aren't my type of game, but um, what I saw was like when you did go to open planets. Um, it seems sort of dead, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why I liked Elden Ring. It's just, it's a different universe. It's unique. The way you play it, you, you build armors, whatever. Graphics, Elden Ring is not the best. I mean, yeah, I I see a lot of people don't want to play Starfield, whatever the name is. <sighs> there's like good art in it. You know, there's a bunch of interesting stuff i mean i want to do good just because it's bad for the industry when something big like that that's expected to to do really well doesn't do good you know um it's just not my like i know friends who are like they you know people, they love that kind of stuff right um yeah. same with people like you know you'd be like oh i can't wait for alan wake and people are like they don't even know what it is the first one or they're just like i'm not excited for that at all right yeah like, we all have our own personal taste and I mean, I think that's what the, the great thing with the game industry is, is like, um, there's so much variation, you know? And I think that's the ex exciting thing we talked about with indie projects, you know, on, the, on this next generation, they're gonna be huge. Um, I think Unreal Engine 5, there's two sides into this. Cause think about it, Unreal Engine 5. There'll be more shit. Yeah, there'll be more, shit, more, right? more crap, yeah. Um, almost like mobile market or something like yeah, that, mobile yeah. games market. but. But at the same time, I think there's some unique potential. ideas will pop out. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some unique ideas will pop up. And I think that's, that's, that's exciting part too, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, past two years, I don't know how you guys feel, but I mean, I haven't seen many good games. Like I played only a couple of games, maybe that's it. I don't have time for it, but then in the past, even if I didn't have time, there were like really good games out there that I would be like, yeah, I'm going to play this. I'm going to play that. But this year, I mean, literally, there is nothing. I don't know if you guys agree or not. What did I get this year? Oh, Star Wars was awesome. I liked that game. I thought that was really good. Oh, you good. played it? Yeah, it good. I thought it was really good. Like, uh, it was just fun. It was just fun. Mm -hmm. Like, the mechanics and everything. Um, the environments were great. And, like, even some of the secondary characters, uh, their designs, their sculpts. Like, yeah, I didn't like, check their, that. Their voice acting, it was, it was good, you know? I it's better than all Star Wars uh, TV shows, which I watched. Mm. <laughs> For me, at least, I don't know. Not really a fan of what Disney's doing much, but yeah. Yeah. Don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Politics, you know. That's it. You never know. You never know yeah. who's watching. Yeah. But no, no. I mean, everybody again. They have their own stuff, right? Um, yeah. That they're interested in, and uh, and then you know you have you know classic, you know, uh, fan fanboys and whatever, right? Like that will defend something to no one, even if it's kind of, you know, for like gamers, right? Yeah. Um, but it does matter. I mean, they are buying people's games, right? Like they're buying people's games. They're supporting people's dreams, you know, to some extent, right? And I think that's all that matters, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone says there is Elden Ring DLC, which is coming out. Yeah, that should be interesting. I don't like DLC, honestly. I just want to play the whole game. Like, DLC is... I don't know. I, I feel like it's a waste of time, waste of energy. When a studio does spend time on DLCs, you just create a very simple, small experience. Just make Elden Ring 2. I know it's going to take time, but then you come up with something more than, like, three hours of gameplay. <laughs> Yeah, I I never buy DLCs. It's just a waste, in my opinion. Even in production, when it's done, when something is done, it's done. I don't know. Maybe they make so much money with it that that's important to them. You know. I like like for single player games. Um, 
like yeah, single-player story really games. Impressive. I like DLC. Yeah, like Witcher's DLC was amazing, right? Like Witcher DLC Mon- was like a full game, honestly. It took so yeah. long to finish it. Yeah. That's a different Run story. Mon- was yeah. incredible, you know? Like, Which- and it not only, it also, like, their, their cutscenes got better. Um, and everything just got better, right? Uh, yeah. So I like it in single-player games like that. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. I was still thinking about what we were talking about there, but but yeah, we'll see how it goes next year. I'm actually, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be pessimistic. Hopefully, something will change, and we won't see these layoffs anymore. But I think more is coming. With the layoffs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope not too much more. What's that? I said I hope not too much more, yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah. It, Hopefully. It's... I mean, I can... Everything's see. crazy out there already. <laughs> what I do, usually, I look at companies, um, a stock evaluation, and then guess based on that what what's going to happen you know i'm just going to check some of these big companies to see what's coming mm-hmm. yeah there's more I mean, Activision deal didn't go through, right? At Microsoft. Uh, I thought mm, it did. Did it? I thought it did. I could I'm be not sure. wrong. Well. The Federal Ninth Circuit of Appeal denied a request by Federal Trade Commission to stop the merger, coming after Federal District Court July. Lemon rejected the FTC's request to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. So it went through? Yeah, I, that's what I mean. I, I remember reading that it did go through. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I remember reading. Or hearing, rather, sorry. Yeah, but that will not stop the downside. I think. I think there will be a big downside for Activision. Before it thinks, I don't know, maybe not now, maybe in five years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Let me check EA. Yeah, same. Well, I guess EA, with them, it's like Dragon, the new Dragon Age, right? It's got to be sort of like their version of Starfield almost right now, right? Like it has to be quite successful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's another risky part for EA. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a chance for a massive downside. Hmm. One's fingers to yeah, a little bit better. Let me read the comments. Have either of you ever been called into the office to be laid off? No. Um I'm yeah, I like if I get laid off I don't care. I'm not in a situation to be worried about it, honestly. I lost my job once in 2008, 2010, that wasn't, um, and it was fine, I figured it out, but I have never been laid off. Actually, it's not bad to get laid off, you get a paycheck. <laughs> you get a I guess it depends <laughs> on the company though, right? Some companies, they don't Most do... companies do it, most companies do it. Yeah. I mean, they, they do it because you're kind of protected, right? In, in, in the workforce if there's absolutely no reason you can challenge it and uh, no one wants to go to court for things like that so they don't take any chances if that makes sense yeah yeah 
So yeah, you you get a severance package. I mean, I'm grateful I haven't, uh, you know, in my career. Luckily, no, I haven't had to experience that. I hope I don't ever. Um, but I mean, it also goes back to I think something we talked about. Maybe it was in my, I don't think it was last week, but maybe in my interview chat with you, it was like it's why personal work is so important. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. like you're constantly learning new things. Um, it doesn't even have to be completely finished work. Like if you're doing stuff that has your personality, your stamp on it, to it, right? Um, it's like you're getting your name out there all the yeah. time. Um, yeah. And then you sort of save yourself from that super anxiety filled situation where it's like, oh shit, I, you know, worst case scenario, got bit, you lose your job. Then you're like, okay, well, I, you know, I just dropped a project last month, uh, you know, or two months ago, and I, I got like three projects in, in the works right now, right? Um, that I can play around with, right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's a big thing, right? I see Cam's guys, and he's talking about Brenton worked with you at Plastic Bike. Oh, who? I think he says, I, I, never think, I remember Greg Brent, mentioned Brent did, us. Yeah. did you work with him? You worked with him, right? Yeah, we worked together at PCF, but I never worked at Plastic Bike. Oh, so. I see. I work with them freelance only in the past. I mean, freelance, I don't care what the company does or how they are. It's just you do the job, get paid. I mean, some of the freelance work I did actually was really fun. Yeah, I mean, freelance is like, for me, it's generally hit or miss. Like, you yeah, know, you get really excited about and then. Or something you get really excited about, but then uh honestly again, there was more exciting stuff in the past than now. And uh right now it's harder to get freelance. Like like I don't know, maybe you're more expensive. For me, um since the strike, I've I've felt it in that sense, right? Uh but you know, um I don't complain about it, you know, too much, yeah. you know, just because of like Obviously, there's a lot of people who complete, that's their entire income, right? I never actually uh, complained about freelance work. I mean, freelance is like you either like it or not. If you don't like it, you don't work with them anymore. That's it. Like he's asking, how was it? I mean, I don't have any opinion, honestly. It was just freelance work. I did it and I got paid. They got what they wanted and that's it. Uh, there's nothing to complain about because there is no control, right? I mean, you're, you're free. You do what how you want work when you when you want and they get what they want and that's it if that makes sense so i mean if 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 i say anything any work i didn't freelance i can say it was fun i don't have any complaints about to say if they, like say anything bad you know most of the the jobs that i didn't like was full time honestly Freelance, I actually liked all of them. It was fun. Is it the same for you, Greg? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it was the biggest thing most time is is always like who you're working with, like their personalities, like yeah, because then working with someone who's really fun and cool, like whether like especially if it's like freelance, if you're dealing with like you know, sometimes they just have an outsourced manager that you're dealing ninety percent of the time with, right? Sometimes you're dealing like almost directly with the director or like the director's second hand man or whatever yeah. right um or this the main soup at a you know uh, at a studio and i think that's what changes it for me it's like you could be working on a really boring freelance but the couple times a week you're thinking with those people um if they're really nice people uh and they're not rude and you know um when they ask for changes and stuff you're like you don't, you know, you don't even think about, you don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, for me, for me, honestly, I mean, it's the same when you work in the house at a studio, right? Like, I don't know. It's always the, the people is what makes like, in my mind, it makes you want to, you know, stay at a place, right? Like you're not always going to have like the best time working on a job, you know? I mean, and you know, you can't complain too much. You could be shoveling shit, right. For a living, um, you know, doing way harder things like what he's doing labor. And it's like, so it's like the people's would generally house where you're like, you want to stay, you know, in that sense, yeah. but well, not, I think not exactly like... steady. I mean, it's, it's an illusion, honestly. 
there's no state like, I mean, as a job like when you have no a no i mean stay it. like stay at a job you know where it's like you know you might want to keep doing work with that freelance client or stay at that company for you know like uh -huh. the longer term um you know and i think yeah like for me freelance it's like it's been hit or miss with that right like some yeah. company um full-time is better in that sense yeah but then you gotta also find the right place it's not easy to find the right place. Some some people find a good company or they're they're a good match, work with them for like 10, 15 years. And it's not always the case, you know, it's it's yep. it takes time. Yeah, I think it's 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 tough, right? And I think with freelancer, you could you could sort of be like, I know this is temporary, so you can get through that aspect of it more, right? Yeah. Um but yeah, obviously in house that's that's not how it works. Personally, I prefer to have my own studio, which is hard to, to make. You got to be in a place to be able to do that. Or I, I should literally just leave everything and work on something myself to be able to do that. But that's, that's where that whole embracer, that embracer thing was rough for, for people uh, who wanted, you know, or there's raw project already with the embracer thing. I got sort of screwed because they, they had, you know, they had, I guess, purchase the amplifier or whatever and some other uh, smaller uh, studios that they were funding indie projects and then because of embracers cuts you know and they spent all the money to purchase you know lord of the ring and all that stuff right um it sucked right because there's a lot of little indie projects where they had like maybe one or two or three million funding right mm -hmm. um and then you know that plug got pulled right and uh is it the one yeah. last week was it when i don't remember uh, I don't know there was there was a chart that showed their entire umbrella of everything that was uh -huh. it was just ginormous, right? <laughs> like it was kind of scary. Like their fingers are in everything. Um, wow. You know, so you never know like who's going to get affected by that. Obviously, right? Um, but yeah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. I I I you know with the big studios, of course, right? But the the indie studios where it's like. They might have been at a big studio, then they took the risk of leaving and starting up their own thing. And then you're like six months into it. And regardless of how that progress is going, you're they're like, you should have luck, you know? And it's like, oh damn, like um, you know, and I'm sure there's like some stipulations to like how some of those contracts were written up and, and things like that. But I hope uh, I hope uh, as many of those uh indie projects were protected, you know. Um because yeah, it's kind of sucks, right? But yeah. Yeah, someone says you're quick. He's actually not quick. He's doing the right brushes. He's making less mistake when he's working. That's the thing. So, like, oh, Keenan says. Yeah, uh, he says you're very you quick. So like, you see, I mean, people think you're working fast. That's a mistake they they do. I mean, he's using his experience to brush basically the correct. Like what you mentioned, you said how many brush strokes you have right now for the past an hour and 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Can you check it? Uh, I think it deleted some because before it was at 900. So it usually deletes like some of the oh, history. Stuff. Okay. Maybe you are not. I imagine anything. it's probably like 2000, probably like, like 715, 720 or something. I said that. So I imagine it's probably at like 1500. Yeah. So you see, that's the difference. I mean, if, if I don't know if it's clear for people he's asking watching. what brush is I, it? well no if he's I'm not, not if i'm not undoing like i don't undo a lot um like yeah you're not I undoing. Make a shape and i don't like it like i you know if you watch how yeah. I'll, I'll push it back in you know uh instead of like you know some people you know i mean when i do like crazy stuff like this i'll undo it you know but like if you do 20 strokes and then you're sitting here undo 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 like you're yeah, you're going backwards right um yeah you just kind of go with it Again, again, I think if you do, if you ever done clay in your life, you you make a million mistakes, right? Um, and then, yeah, you have to go back. And yeah. it, so. But you know that you develop that habit over time. It takes time to be more accurate on brushing and not being af afraid and not undoing. You know, I, I don't undo much anymore. Like I just go in and do it and f try to just keep pushing. Um, over I think a cool exercise you could do for yourself, like, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've ever tried it before. Uh, I, I know I've talked to a lot of guys. They never, uh, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. They never tried the exercise, but it's worth doing just for shits and giggles too for yourself. It's like uh, just turning off the undo function in ZBrush. Yeah, and, yeah, that's a good idea. And and just forcing yourself to be like, you you really start to see 
like how many times you doubt it you're like how, oh why don't i do that and you're like well why like if you if you put this mark here you know like and you, you cut into this and you're like oh that's that's way too sharp you know for his ribcage it. instead of undoing it right you could just be like okay cool that's too sharp but like I can go back in. I could add more volume here. Uh, then I could feather this out and then yeah. put more of that oblique more, in. More like clay, exactly, right? Yeah, you can pull back down and then pull some of these shapes back in, right? Like, you know, uh, maybe his asis is like sticking out a little bit here, right? And then, uh, yeah, and then you can add some of that fat folds back in here, you know, pulling it down. And then, yeah, and it's like all of a sudden you just you go from that and then you start just kind of flowing around instead of being like so fixated on like one little point right um and it's like yeah i think it's a fun little experiment that you could try you know like turning off undo and then seeing uh seeing what what happens from that right mm -hmm. yeah i think it's fun so you can just just see for your own sanity right like yeah, what sort of happens nicely. but yeah so i mean we're almost up we've got like 15 minutes but uh maybe we could leave like last time we didn't, i guess we didn't leave much time for questions at yeah, the end maybe, maybe we can switch to that because i feel like um you also need to rest a little bit before you can come up with this stuff or this it's up to you do you guys want to ask questions we can switch to that whoa sorry about that <laughs> that wasn't bad <laughs> I know, you know it's, it's, you know it's what jarring you should do? for some people to see color and stuff. Right? Let's do this. In five minutes, add a bunch of colors to it. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> okay. Just poly paint quickly. Yeah. Five Let's minutes. Save. Starting now. <laughs> Let me think. Are you didn't save yet? Let's see. <laughs> Uh, Keenan asked if you're repeating. Yeah, everybody has his own style. You are going to repeat yourself many, many times in every character because what happens is that's why when you see somebody's work, like, uh, I don't know, like Greg's work or Vitaly Bolgarov's work, you see and you know his style. Uh, it's just a matter of like practicing and then you figure out something that works and you can just keep using that on all of your characters. So you're going to repeat yourself. For sure, without a doubt. All right, paint. You have four minutes. It says, nice to meet you, Roger. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. I'll just add some. Someone is asking for a course. We want to actually, uh, I'm going to talk to. Greg, we, we're going to plan something for a course. Um, maybe if you want something now, you can send us an email or we can put you in the list because mm -hmm. we want to have a limited class, maybe 15 people, Greg, something like that. Yeah, I think that's 20. what we're talking about. If you want it, just send me your email and then uh, I can just put you in the list. I'm going to create a list for it so you can just register there you know what uh, yeah send me your email or send me an email to my email and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create a google form for those who want to join this class thing that we want to make and uh we will announce it maybe in a week or two like with more accurate timing and stuff Just, uh... Yeah, we are we are planning to make a full class, basically. Not just Greg, both of us. <laughs> so you get two for for one. Did I say it correctly? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> like uh, Wendy's Happy Meal. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I'm just moving this a little bit. This guy's just distracting me. Yeah. yeah, if you want to send an email, whoever wants to, just send an email to me. Um, I'm going to make a Google form for next week and put it in the description of the videos. And uh, we were planning to just work on this a little bit, give you guys some stuff and then announce it. But then we mentioned it already. 
Awesome, perfect. I think Luc Lucas and Josh are interested. So, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, we've, we, me and Josh, we've talking uh, before too, so it'd be cool. Well, yeah, I mean, we want to do something different, honestly, something different than everybody else. Um, like more in depth, you know, longer classes, collaboration, you know, both of us. This is awesome, man. Usually, Greg, in my own classes, I go in depth and share everything. I have a class that I did for a, for a year, and I talked about every single part of the character from beginning until audio. Like, it's, it's in my portfolio as well. I think I showed it to you, right? You remember that? Yep. The Persian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the techniques. We can do the same thing here. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it would just be uh, like what we're doing here, but not in as rushed of a, a setting, right? Yeah, in two hours, um, you can't do much. Like, you have to go in depth and depth and show everything, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, I show, like, my entire process um, as, like, taking things from, you know, what the ZBrush state is to... Uh, you know, from like you, you guys already watched last week, right? Start this guy started from uh, nothing last week, you know, and started from the mannequin, um, uh, you know, and then we're here now, um, and uh, yeah, we can go through that entire process, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of what his armor. Well, guys, it's not going to be a tutorial, tutorials are different. This is kind of like what, what we are planning to do is more as a mentorship, it's it's going to be more, much more in depth. I mean, 15, 20 people in the class, you get to ask all the questions, you know, you get to interact, you do work and bring it and get feedback on your work and then you continue, things like that. Um, fix your mistake at the same time, help you find concepts, ideas, how to develop your ideas. Um, I mean, it depends on how long we, we, we plan to do this class, but for my classes I did in the past, I even talk about like, you know, how to present your portfolio or how to apply for the job or, how to write mm -hmm. an email or how to, you know, basic everything. You know what I mean? Like zero to hundred. That's Roger is in my class. Actually, he's, he's here in the chat. He can tell you if he's happy or not. With Greg, we can do better. I'm trying to think what I think would be uh, out to play around with this guy. I haven't thought about color much with him. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's good I that think... I, I just said like do it quickly because I want to. Sometimes you just do something quickly and get rid of the initial idea, and then you improve from there. Oh yeah, I mean, for me, I'll I'll paint things uh, quite up like I'll paint over things, you know. But I bet it'd be cool to show different, you know, way of infection. You know, I, I try to like think of ways you can bring like color, yeah, uh, yeah. into something, right? And I think it'd be interesting to like have uh that infection on his arm is uh i guess not your typical uh colors you know like because i think of when i think of gin you know um i think like that they have a a lot of colors associated with them you know yeah and i think yeah, i think it'd be interesting to to drive some of that um through with the infection right i think it could be cool yeah. Someone is asking, what's the price? We haven't decided on that yet. No. It depends on the length of it. That's what we have to, me and Greg have to sit and talk how we want to do it and how long it should be, how long is enough, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, like, when you're trying to show, like, entire process of character, I think it's like... Six months, three months. Yeah, I would say like three months, I think, right? Like, I think something like that is a nice amount of time. Um, like, it gives people, like, again, it's also like part of it is too, is like picking something that's not going to be like overwhelming of yeah. like, uh, what are you trying to do? You know, uh, like, is this your first character? You know, I, I think that's the other thing to preface it with. Like, I think, you know, you would want to have some experience, you know, going into it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, some like in my classes, I have a students who know 3D. I don't teach them how to navigate, but then 
not all of them necessarily on the, are in the same level. So, uh, but th they're fine because just they know how to sculpt a little bit. You know, the basic, yeah. the, the fun, basic stuff are important to know. But then they, they, I teach a lot in the class as well. I think honestly, I feel like three, four months should be enough, or maybe four months, three months, four months, something like that. Um, price wise, should we say anything now? No, I mean, we can just talk about it more. We can and, talk I mean, about it later, yeah, because it's yeah. hard to. If it say something think, and then, I, yeah, yeah, and I think too, like the one, the, when I think of time, like you know, like the only thing I worry about, like when you know you have programs or like mentorship things that are really long you maybe sometimes lose like that sense of urgency you know um, yeah. to it you drag it out you know and you might potentially change the idea a bunch of times right yeah. um so like for me i think it almost be uh like that's why i think like three months right is like a good time um for something like that yeah the because other thing the other thing is i want to make sure uh, the commitment is important to get to, for people to be committed because that's how you get results. You can't just expect to come to the class and do nothing and get results. You gotta, you gotta like be committed for three, four months, you know, four, eight hours, whatever time we decide to do classes every week. Uh, so there's about a bit of, uh, awesome. Someone Lotus already sent me an email. I'll check it later, but I'm going to make a form. Add your name. Not sh yeah, I got, I got yours. Okay. So we have one. Uh, okay. Who was the other guy? Josh. Go ahead, ask your question, Lotus. Let me just make sure. so right now i mean we're just sketching this but these I, in the past i used to do this kind of stuff in zbrush like veins you know things like that yeah, but yeah. most of the days now i do this all in like painter because then yeah yeah if your art director says like you know you do this you put it you know it's very subtle but there's like a green tint to this vein right it's, it's yeah. subtle um, not just that you know, also whatever. details you know if you have leather armor details mm -hmm. things like that i don't i don't do them in zbrush i see people are still going crazy on the armor and adding all sorts of details and noise scratches all that can be done in painter unless if it's a big big change on the system. yeah and it's also if again like if you you do this like okay you put oh, i put this big vein here whatever and then your art director's like oh you know like yeah, you're in trouble with that skull. It's not green. <laughs> or, you know, we, we decided like the the infection from the the gin is blue now. You know, it's like, and then you know, because some guys will really they'll go crazy with poly paint uh, to then bring it in, right? Uh, now you're stuck with that, right? Like you gotta go back. You know, you gotta go back to Z brush, remove the vein. <laughs> yeah. Then smooth it out. Get rid of the color. Right. Rebake your poly paint. You know, so it's like, uh, you know, and in my box you can paint color in layers, which is great. But in Z brush you can't. Um, so these days I try to keep that stuff separate um, just because uh, it's just so easy. Yeah. It's just so easy. Like any really big veins that I know I'm like, I'm not changing this. Like, like something like this, I'll sculpt that in and bake that, but any kind of like superficial veins like that, you know, like these still, they're pretty big, but I will do that in painter. You know, I'll connect it to here, blend it in with the height normal. Yeah. Uh, and then do that in painter. But yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I would do the same. I don't really do fre frequency details or small details. Sometimes I put wanes, depends on the situation. Um, but yeah, that's, you get the same thing in yeah. Painter. This is great. Yeah, so We're at the two, more, two hour mark. Uh, should we wrap it up? Save it because the color scheme you have is not bad. It, this is, this is kind of what I had in mind, honestly. Like rotted, uh, smelly you know what else you could do here maybe we can do it in painter maybe here maybe one of the things you could do as if this guy he didn't wash himself so he could have some areas layers of a skin that are like you know thicker and you can see that skin is popped out but then there's like 
some areas it oh fell. yeah i mean like see what i mean I like could a, i could do that whole pass i mean again like uh if i'm approaching this like from production again like i'll wait to know like once we know where the arm is yeah 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 then it's like i won't focus you know like all this work here this is just for like just to show you guys I mean, if you think right? But, yeah, if you think this is good, like proportion wise and stuff, you can send it to me. I'm gonna do a pass on the armor. And then if you have armor ideas as well, yeah. Greg, you can tell me how to do that. Oops, sorry. So yeah, so yeah, I mean that's where we were uh at the beginning of the session and then we took them to here. Let's compare it to the fir very first one. Uh from last week. If you have it. Oh wow, yeah, that's a big a very change. Massive change. Yeah, yeah. And then uh oops. So now Let let's see the final one. Close guy. Whoops, there we go. That's crazy. And if you do his legs, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, so I mean uh yeah, that's where we started last well last week we started from the mannequin, right? But um then we went to there and then and I just did this, those adjustments, but most of the time I spent just whatever free time I had, just moving the mesh over. Um, and then, yeah, and then did all the sculpting sets in here. Yeah. You can just see the changes awesome. here. But yeah, I mean, amazing. this guy's feeling more, yeah, in tune with, uh, whoops. Yeah, uh, absolutely. What you're saying, right? So. And it's just two sessions, so. <laughs> well, two yeah. and a half, you did a bit of work. Uh, yeah, I did a little bit of work during the week, yeah. right? Because fitting that mesh and getting this nice clean mesh on top makes a big difference, right? It makes yeah, it makes it, it makes working on it just less stressful to jump up and down the subdivisions. Yeah. Less stressful. It just makes a much more enjoyable enjoyable process, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna switch to this screen so we can wrap yeah, it I up, mean, guys. I can't speak for Sony Santa Monica, but um, I mean, some studios also when they know they're gonna do like an art route, they'll put a lot of work into the meshes that you might think they might do it all in ZBrush like that, but sometimes it could just be for the, the really amazing like presentation. I mean, it could thing, right? it could but, make sense because if if you're advertising for your company, yeah, I mean, it's just you know extra work, but then it it pays off when you do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's cool, and I think every company like I don't know if this is what they do, right? But uh, yeah. I think every company it'd be really cool like for them to give the team like, oh, you're done, you know. Uh, everything's gold you, you, you know you can't change anything art wise right in the project at that point i think it'd be really cool to give them the opportunity to be like load up some of your file you know oh, you work you worked on the, the malkin you know uh you know gin you know corrupted gin guy or whatever right it's like cool go back to it and like push it and then you know do your presentations um i never got the opportunity uh you know in my entire career but a lot of places they do it and i think it's really cool because uh with those companies, it gives the artists a chance to promote themselves, right? Um, it might turn out better, actually. Yeah, because you, you you know, like when you're working on the project, you would know, like, oh, I'm gonna get a chance to show this at the end. Yeah. Like, not just like, hey, here's a screenshot of my TV, you know, or my computer screen. Like, actually show like ZBrush, you know, different ZBrush angles of the sculpt, and then you'll get time to put in a really nice presentation render that everybody matches, so it looks consistent from a company. Um, you put that extra effort into it, right? And I think it's yeah. cool because it shows like appreciation from the company to the people that work for them, right? Yeah. You're only as good as the people that work for you. And yeah, like giving them that little bit of a bone of like, oh, you just spent four years working on this. <laughs> yeah. Pre present this and add, you know, 12 pieces to your portfolio, right? Um, and that helps them in the future too, right? Because then, you know, now if you only have time because, you know, life just gets in the way or you want to pursue other things like carpentry, uh, you know, Things like that on the side right like you don't have to pressure as much because you're like i got all these awesome portfolio pieces from projects i worked on you know yeah yeah 100%. so i think it's really cool that my places do that give artists the opportunity i think every so, place should do that but yeah i agree all but, right uh, let's wrap it up <laughs> yeah i got like an hour i'm, I'm gonna watch football game tonight so awesome place tonight, so. <laughs> cool let me just finish this guys we'll see you guys maybe next week again right Next yeah, week, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe like I said, we do one more live. We could focus the the. You could be the focus on the whole session, doing armor and props. Yeah, I think yeah. next week we can focus on. We should talk. I I think yeah. either next week or the week after, because I have to like figure out how do we want to do the armor. Most likely next week, if not the yeah. week after. But we'll definitely do it. And then another video is coming, guys. I did an interview with a 
powerlifter who is making a game, which is interesting. So I'm going to finish this stream here. Thanks, Greg. This was amazing. Yep, thank you, everybody who came out. Thank you, guys. Take care, and we will see you guys soon. Just share the video with your friends, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe so we can grow this channel. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers, Bye. guys. Bye-bye. Ciao.